Hello, my name is Johnny Binder, General Curator for Cameron Park Zoo. On today's show, we're going to find out why zookeepers have been busy literally around the clock caring for Cameron Park Zoo's new baby orangutan. Join me as we step into the wild. This is baby Razak. He was born to May and KJ, two of our Bornean orangutans, on January 12th. Um, about a little over a week into um, after his birth, we noticed that his mom, May, was exhibiting some abnormal behaviors with him. She was not really as responsive to him as she should have been to a newborn. So we started documenting the abnormal behavior and became concerned that he was not getting good enough maternal care. We consulted with the orangutan SSP husbandry advisor and the orangutan SSP chairperson and uh, we sent video and sent documentation of the different behaviors that we had been observing. We felt like May was having some anxiety issues with the baby and we wanted to give her a chance to calm down and we wanted to ensure that this baby was going to live and be a healthy individual. They're such critically endangered animals that it was really crucial that uh, we make sure that this one survives. And so we, with a heavy heart, pulled him from his mom and started hand rearing. And uh, we have at all times remained in visual proximity to May and we've also allowed her to touch him when she wants to. So we spend a lot of our time, you know, just letting them have a chance to look at him and touch him. And sometimes they're very receptive and especially KJ seems to be very protective. We've started May on some anti-anxiety medications and we are hoping to see some improvement and see her become more interested in the baby. Our ultimate goal is to get him back with his mother. In the meantime, it requires a lot of care from a lot of individuals here at the zoo. So we have a team of about eight people that are taking care of him around the clock. We do shift at least every four hours. And one reason we do that, and we haven't assigned just one or two caregivers, of course, scheduling and getting the caregivers rest is part of it, but we also don't want him to bond to any one individual. We want him to eventually bond back with his mom. So he, we want him to feel secure and well cared for, but we don't want him to bond with just one individual. And, and he's very calm switching back and forth. You'll notice we have a blow-up mattress in here because the keepers that come in and stay with him at night um, will lay down with him and they just hold him in the same position, kind of up under the crook of their arm, that's the way that May sleeps with him. So that's how they, they sleep with him. I will say our zookeepers and our animal care manager of this area are the rock stars because they're the ones that spend the night. Uh, the curators haven't had to spend the night yet, so we really appreciate them for that. It's a human baby formula that we are giving him. They share 97% of our DNA, so really taking care of an orangutan infant is not all that different than taking care of a human infant. This little vial here has different times that um, the company figured out works really well. So we just kind of play around with it. Usually takes about a minute to heat and our larger ones, our 48 ones, take about five minutes. So you just pour the water into the bottom. I like just prepping it um, and having this ready to go. And then you just press 
the start and this steam will heat up the bottle. We do test it to make sure that it's not way too hot for him or too cold. Uh, it needs to be about body temperature, just like for human kiddos. Right now he's getting 48 mils about every two hours. Uh, and he's allowed to have an extra 10 mils based off of stomach capacity within that first hour of receiving that 48 mils. Uh, it does increase every time his weight increases, which is really cool. Um, our vet figured out this whole algorithm and one of our keepers was able to make it into an Excel spreadsheet, which was really handy for us. <laughs> Sometimes he fights it a little bit right at first, but generally he's, yeah, <laughs> he's pretty excited about his bottle and he holds onto the vest like he would to mom. And typically that upright position is the position they would be in when they're nursing. But if you think about it, orangutans are moving around quite a bit, climbing, and so the baby has to be able to cling and nurse at the same time a lot of the time. And then just like human babies, we pat him on the back so we get a burp. And uh, generally he falls asleep pretty soon after his bottle. It's really important for us to make him hang on and really walk around with him a lot to strengthen his muscles and keep him very strong. We don't want him to get complacent and be used to being carried all the time. If we are going to relieve each other from a shift and the vest is clean, um, it's really easy for us to just keep him where he is and then we can just shift in. Hold on. See the vest without disturbing the little guy. Uh huh. We've had lots of practice at it lately. This is a vest that has, it's basically just a blanket poncho and then it has strips of felt uh, sewn on it so that he can grasp. He will not, need to be able to grasp mom's hair and he needs to be able to grasp very tightly. And if you see his little fist, he has a really good tight grip on that vest and that's what we want while he's, while he's nursing. And you know, as off, even when he sleeps, he always has a tight grasp. And it's really funny when he falls sound asleep and he lets go, he jumps and, and he'll grasp again. And that's a good thing, that's what we want. We let him grab onto a stuffed animal. We have a sloth and we have an orangutan. And once he gets a, a hold of that he, and he feels secure holding it, we wrap him in a blanket and then put him in a bucket to weigh him. And that way he feels comfortable, he wasn't crying or anything like that. And that allows him us to get weights on him. We try to get a weight on him every day. We typically weigh him, take his temperature and take his respiration every day around 10 o'clock. Try to do it at the same time every day so we can be consistent in tracking his health. We keep an infant log that has the date and time uh, his weight, but, uh, what he was fed, because eventually we hope to be moving before, between breastfeeding and formula feeding. How much he ate, if he urinated, defecated, any other note, medical notes that we need to make on this sheet. Each caretaker that takes care of him fills it out and initials it. basically tummy time, kind of like human babies where they really start to develop hanging out on the ground. And so Razak here, he's getting all of a lot of muscles by doing this and he's learning right now to reach out and grab fun things. And we're also preparing him so that whichever female orangutan, Kutai or May that he does go in with, that if they do happen to leave him in their nest and walk away to go grab a drink of water or anything like that, he'll be pretty comfortable with it. And so that'll be really good. That won't be a stressful new thing for him at all. We're getting him just prepared for when he's in with an orangutan. Even if we're Zach goes with May or Kutai, we'll need to do bottle feedings for him. So for May to get up her supply, we'll need to supplement food in. And then if Kutai is uh, the one that takes him as the surrogate mommy, um, obviously she's not producing milk, so we'll have to uh, give him food. And so we want to prepare him for that. So when he's in with an orangutan, even our girls are five times stronger than a pro football player. So we can't just walk in there, give him a bottle, anything like that. So we need to ask the girls to bring him up to the mesh and then for him to learn that he needs to reach onto the bottle through the mesh. So it's gonna look just like this, and then if I'm on the orangutan side. So we, we try to figure that out. Uh, this is luckily our keeper door. 
Um, that's for our secondary containment, so we don't need to utilize the stall every single time. And so this side here actually looks exactly like the orangutan side. There's no handles, there's no knobs, anything like that. And then this is our keeper side. You can see here that there's a ledge. So say we fed him on this side, and he got used to holding onto that ledge, that's not gonna be beneficial when he goes in with an orangutan. So those are some of the things that we had to think about when starting to really prepare him and get him ready to go uh, in with a girl. So we get him up, we want him to succeed, so we try to get it close to um, mouth level, and we'll ask the girls to do that. this. We'll ask them to bring Razak up, and then we can get him ready to transfer over. So grab it. And so you can see here that he is supporting his whole weight with his hand here, which is completely normal, exactly what he's gonna do. And then he reaches up and he finds the bottle and he drinks from that. And then if he doesn't finish the bottle, we do actually mimic where it would be on May. And so we make sure to hold it to our chest and hold it steady and that he has to come up to the bottle whenever he wants to drink it. But uh, he's getting close to his nap time, so he's not super interested in food. Just like when we get tired, we're not really interested in eating. Uh, we just want to take a nap. <laughs>